G'day humans, Chris Dev here. Today I am reviewing the ASUS ROG Phone 7 Ultimate. Now this bad boy is releasing in Australia on July 19 and it costs $2,100 here in Australia. So it's really up there on price. But as we'll go into, it more or less meets that price when it comes to the specs and the experience and the performance here for the most part. You know, just make sure you go into this thinking of gaming first because you know, as a phone, it's acceptable on most levels, but it's great as a gaming device. And that's where this thing really shines. So let's jump in and take a closer look in my ASUS Republic of Gamers Phone 7 Ultimate Review. And of course, we have to start with the specs of this bad boy. Now, like I mentioned, this is a beast. It's got the latest Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chipset. You know, it offers ray tracing acceleration software, amongst other things. It's got 16 gigabytes of RAM in this, the ultimate edition of the phone, and a 512 gigabyte SSD. Now, the screen is the big ticket here, the stunning 6.78 inch IPS LCD AMOLED display. It runs at 165 hertz, has HDR10 plus support, a 29 aspect ratio, 396 PPI, uh, just over 2K resolution and uh, 1500 nits peak brightness. So the screen's an absolute weapon as I'll go into a bit more in, in detail in, in a bit. Uh, camera wise, look, spec wise looks great. 50 megapixel rear, 30 megapixel ultra wide and a five megapixel macro on the back. Uh, the front end's got a 32 megapixel selfie camera, uh, which all sounds good, but as I'll go into, it's not really that great at its photography. Um, we'll film 8K at 24 frames a second and we'll film 4K at 60 frames a second, which is more than enough for most of us. The battery on this is huge, it's 6,000 milliamp hours, that's two, 3,000 as well, and uh, battery loss is a huge uh, bonus with this particular phone. Uh, it's 5G, Wi Fi 6C, a 65 watt wide charging, no wireless charging, so that's one of the few downers that you can say about this phone, no wireless charging. Uh, but 65 watt wide charging, and it can get to 100% in 42 minutes, which is really, really impressive. And look, it runs Android 13, uh, and it's pretty basic in that regard. There's not, not much um, on top of that. You can switch it to their kind of uh, Asus mode, which uh, gives it a bit more of a gaming pizzazz, or you can just go with the classic interface there. So as you can see, there's plenty going on in this phone. Uh, and, and that's why you're seeing that price point get so high. And it doesn't just come with that. I do want to talk a little bit about the experience of actually receiving it for the first time, because it's a bit unique. It's, it's, I do like the way ASUS treats gamers. They, there's, a lot, there's a lot of respect there, and they get a lot of effort for gamers in a lot of their game products. So the ROG, Republic of Gamers, there's, a, there's a quite a few things against the range. You can look at my, I just recently did a review of the ROG Ally handheld device, which you can see on my channel, and I've reviewed the laptops before in the past as well. Like they do a really good job with it. So this is the box that it comes in, uh, it comes with. It actually doesn't come with this case. That's a separate, uh, separate thing. I'll talk about that a bit more in a second. But when you first get it, you open it up, you, take, you get your phone out, this bit at the bottom actually comes off and it's got a little mat here that you, lie, you lay this down on the ground, you place your phone in this space just here and it takes you through this kind of like, like intro tutorial experience, just gets you familiar with some of the, uh, the, the, the aspects of this phone which are unique, in particular the air triggers which are kind of uh, like pressure mounts on top here that you can go to turn these into triggers like a controller, it's really cool. Uh, shows off the, 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 the unbelievable audio that this phone packs. The audio on this is exceptional. Uh, and also the visual experience as well. So that kind of like intro experience that I put the effort into, uh, you know, I, 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 I liked it. I was really impressed by that when I first got it and opened it up for the first time. Also in that box, you don't just get the phone, you also get this fan. So that's actually a fan that hooks onto the device and I'll actually just show it and if I can hook it up for you now. Um, just comes up to the back here. So there's two USB ports and it's got a USB port on it. And if you come in like that, it locks in and sits on the back and cools the phone down. Now this is, as I'll go into a bit more in performance, necessary. You can see it just lighting up there as it kind of turns on. Uh, it can run hot, this phone, uh, when you just like really pound it. Um, it does run a bit hot but they have included this fan with it. And it just sits on the back there. It doesn't really add much to the weight, I've got to say. Like, there's not a real noticeable weight difference here. 
with the addition of the uh, fan. And it's really neat the way that they've just kind of like used this opportunity to also kind of add some more trigger options here as well for you when you're holding it like this, which is good because I'm gonna talk about the design a bit more in a second. Uh, but one of the aspects of the design that I don't like is this camera here at the back. Like the camera is not a big part of this phone. It's not, it's okay, but it's not great. Uh, the, the results you get from this camera, but it is a pain in the butt when you haven't got this on, your finger sits right there on it and it just always digs into you. Even in the case, uh, it's just an uncomfortable experience holding that kind of finger there. So when you've got the fan on the back, there's something else to kind of rest your fingers on there and use and it actually, you know, it works really well. So that comes included in the box as well. So talking about the design, we might as well jump in and have a closer look at that right now. Let's get that out of the way. So if you're familiar with the ASUS ROG range at all, this kind of aesthetic that they go for will be quite familiar to you. And uh, I love it. It, it. it looks really cool. It's really, uh, as a kind of a bit of pizzazz that gamers are after, but also it's instantly identifiable for what it is. Uh, and if you're sitting on the bus or the train and someone sees the back of this phone and looks at it, they're gonna know exactly what you're up to. Uh, and the case, also offering that clear back there just to be able to show that off and the lighting that comes through it as well. So the design aspect on that side of things, really, really cool. Uh, what uh, is a bit more troublesome is it's, a, it's quite a, got a, quite a slippery surface. So obviously you can put it in a case, it gives you a bit more. This particular case isn't much better. It's actually kind of slippery as well. I'd actually prefer a little bit more of a, a ridged effect on this to just get a bit more grip. Uh, but if you're, if you're kind of holding it like this and just gaming it without a case, it's very, very slippery to the touch. Uh, and it, it makes it look really nice and makes it look really cool. And the screen obviously is the big ticket here and it looks amazing. But as soon as you're kind of in gaming mode, it's just a little too easy to drop and it's a $2,100 product that you've got in your hands, right? So it's not something that you definitely, it's just not something that you want to drop on the ground at all. Uh, as mentioned, two, two USB-C ports, this thing charges really quite well. So this one can sit in here and run off this and run your fan while you're also, uh, you can also charge it. Uh, at the, uh, so that gives you a bit of flexibility there, nicely thought. Speaking of ports, really good that it's still got a headphone jack as well for those of us who want to use that wide audio experience, but obviously you've got Bluetooth here as well. Um, as Wi-Fi, but Bluetooth is what you're probably connected to audio device. But as I mentioned, the speakers, the speakers actually the sound, the front of this are just exceptional anyway. So you, I've just been playing it in my house just then, so not on a bus where I could annoy anyone else, and it was pumping. Like, honestly, it was so loud that uh, you could hear it from rooms away. So it's a, it's a really good audio experience as well. It's it's it's, it's pretty clear. Uh, sometimes I, I I felt it went a little bit to static on some really high notes, but I'm not sure if I was just covering something with my fingers as I was holding it, and that was actually more of a, more of what was causing it than the actual phone. Just to it a couple of times, but more, but otherwise very, very impressed by the audio on this. Also worth mentioning that's Gorilla Glass Victus on the front here. It's an aluminium frame. It's IP54 rated, so it's water resistant, a bit, bit better than we've seen previously, but it's, you still can't throw it in a pool or do anything like that. And 236 grams, so it's kind of a, it's kind of, but like a lot, I've heard a lot of commentary about this being big and heavy. You know, I'm used, I actually use a Samsung S22 at the moment, and this doesn't really, it's a smaller screen than that, and it's not that heavy. It's actually a bit slim, uh, slimmer as well, so I don't really feel that the bulk of it is that big an issue at all. Uh, the only thing you could potentially say on the design front is that if you were to pick this up and either the, the six or the five, the previous two phones, I don't think you'd be able to see the, dif the, the difference between them really at a glance. So they haven't really evolved the look of this uh, much in the iterations, but maybe they don't have to. Now, I've already spoken a little bit about the performance of this phone, just in everything else I've been covering, but it, you know, it goes without saying here that as, as a gaming experience on this phone is really, really, really fantastic. It uses its performance. If you can set it up to X mode, there's a couple of modes you can choose from. X modes where it's gonna really mine that performance and there's a noticeable step up if you go to that from some of the softer modes, which is where you might head if you're just doing basic admin stuff or just hanging out on your phone or uh, trying to save battery. But when you want that performance, you go into X mode and uh, boy does it shine. The screen looks fantastic. It's also buttery smooth. I played you know, Genshin Impact and Crossfire and Ark Survival and 
uh, Sky and a few and Asphalt 9 and play, play, playing games like that, everything just runs lovely and beautiful and that's its whole purpose for existing right looking, sounding great as a gaming device. And on that front, it absolutely nails it. Uh, that kind of performance also transcends to just using it in general. Like you'll notice that kind of like snappiness when you're just using it as a phone and going through the various phone things. So that kind of, the performance of it does transcend to that. But then, you know, the photos, as I mentioned, which is a big thing for a lot of people with, with, with a mobile phone, uh, definitely if you're looking for something that plays games really good but also takes fantastic photos around that $2,000 price point then Apple, Samsung, Google, Pixel, they're top of the range items are definitely going to give you um, give you a bit, give, give you probably a more rounded phone in that in that regard. But when it comes down to pure gaming, beast, absolute beast for sure. Now battery life is also something with this particular phone that I've been astounded with. And so even if you're just running it like, you find the most demanding game you possibly can and just playing it full tilt, you're still gonna be able to play it full tilt all day without this thing running out of battery. Like easy eight plus hours on max. Most of the time, and most of the time that I've been using it, easy two days. Like you're looking 16, 17, 18 hours, even more than that. Um, if you're just kind of gaming here and there, commuting, uh, maybe sitting on a couch at night having a play and otherwise just surfing the web, Instagram, watching, looking at movies, doing emails, that kind of thing. It just lasts and lasts and lasts and lasts and the fast charging is just like, whoa, it just fast charges straight away. So that's awesome for a gaming device to be able to just hold on to that um, battery life through the real high performance experiences uh, and then just be able to charge so quick. This really makes it a gamer friendly device for sure. So there you have it, those are my thoughts on the ASUS ROG Phone 7 Ultimate, which is launching here in Australia on July 19. I'm putting this video up on July 19, so unless you watch it in the first couple of seconds, it's already out and you can get it right now. I think it's an above average phone, but it's an excellent gaming device. Uh, so if you're a dedicated mobile gamer, then you are probably going to find yourself getting the value for money with this. If you're looking for something that is just more a casual gaming experience, then you're going to find more well-rounded phones at this price point and you should probably look elsewhere uh, at the top of the Apple range, top of the Samsung range, tops of the Pixel range. They're, they're, all, they're all up a quality cameras, quality experiences and there's still a good access to games. In fact, the same games that you can get here with those Android devices. Uh, but uh, you're just not going to, you just, it's just not going to be quite as good a gaming experience as this and you'll have quite the same audio as well. So there you go. Those are my thoughts on the ROG 7 Ultimate. Pretty impressed, really. Thanks very much for watching. I'm Chris Dead. Until next time, check you later. Yeah.